Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today, I put out a posting talking about what guide do you guys want to see on Apex from Gibraltar to Wraith to Octrain, anybody. And it looks like the poll and the consensus was Wraith. So we'll start with Wraith. I know Gibraltar is a very big favorite right now. I even have his his uh, heirloom. That's super sick. Looks awesome. But nonetheless, today's focus is going to be Wraith. So what we're going to do, I'm going to break this video down from the very beginner basics of Wraith in general. We're going to talk here at the very high level to start. Then we're going to get really in depth looking from an outside perspective of what it looks like when you're utilizing the abilities and how you will maximize and use them. And then of course at the very end we're going to discuss the synergy with other legends in the game. We're literally going to go through every single legend and break down the synergy and this is really the advanced stuff when it comes to Wraith and really what you see in competitive and I think it's going to give a great insight and I think it's a good idea honestly that we started off with Wraith. So let's begin. So Wraith obviously is a legend. She has a very small hitbox profile compared to Horizon as Marianas is running around. Again Marianas is going to be helping us today so he's going to give his input a little later and we're going to talk about some stuff and really break things down. She does take a little bit more damage, 5% to be exact. So just to notate that, but that's because of her small hitbox. Wraith is a very sweaty character, meaning that if you have really good movement and you're really bouncing around just as much as I'm doing right now, it can be really hard to hit her. It's why she, why she was nerfed as well, because before she would duck her head down whenever she was running. So again, very, very basic, very easy. Obviously she has moves, she has her Q. Takes a bit of a ramp up time. That's something to notate whenever you're running around and we're gonna get high level talking about that in just a second. And of course, as we're looking at this, she also has her ultimate ability, which she can pair with her Q, just as an FYI. Obviously, you keep going, you can literally stop and stop the ripped energy, just as an FYI, or you can keep going, or you can place it early if you want. So even though I'm at 1% here, I can place it immediately. This creates a portal from point A to point B. And this is really, really important as we get through the synergy of various characters and how it's all going to work. This is really going to be massive for Gibraltar, for Watson, for many, many characters as you go from point A to point B. Just to notate in this guide, this distance has been buffed, has been nerfed many, many times, as well as her movement speed. Just to notate, again, when you're using her Q, the ramp up time, and then she gets about 30% increased movement speed as she's going from point A to point B. This is important to notate whenever you're utilizing, Here I come. Back <clears throat> excuse me, sky. utilizing her this Q. Time. Because when you're using your Q to get away, you can definitely use it to get faster movement speed when you're bouncing around, whenever you're moving, to make yourself a much harder target to hit. Very, very important. Now, the reason of how you're going to utilize your Q, essentially whenever you are Wraith, is that remember whenever she's going into phase, she cannot be hit. So if you are here in this area, as an example, and this is what makes Wraith so powerful, and you're in a really bad spot or bad position, you can instantly use your Q to go from point A to point B. Let's say your enemy is out in the open. And boom, here you are. You no longer got hit, and you're not at the risk of getting hit whatsoever whenever you're in your queue. There's a lot of things you can do to avoid, which is why it makes her such a high-tier player. But of course, you have to keep in mind the ramp-up time. So let's say there's a nade, and you have to use your queue right away and avoid it. Notice how, obviously, the explosions definitely occur. You come back. There is no uh, grenade. I got kicked from the server, and that's perfectly fine, but at least showcase that example. So I will pick up the guide here in just a second once we're back in hey, two everybody. seconds. So I did notate that we just crashed. So one thing I want to highlight real quick. So what I'm going to do right after we talk about this, the fact that I got kicked from the server, is I'm going to highlight the distance of Rafe's Q. But before I do that, I want to talk really quickly that to really notate that Wraith is a duelist. She is an entry fragger. She's the first person that goes into a fight. And she's the first person to most likely leave or get knocked. But that's because of her Q being able to say if she were to get into a gunfight here and then she's losing. But remember, of course, when you utilize her Q and you go back, then you have to be mindful of the time in between because they can literally just one tap you and be done with you and then you're gone. So real quick, very, very high level. I put together a guide on weaponry already, but that weapons like the Mastiff for close range, the PK, the Prowler, even the... The thing is that you don't really want to run a sniper or long range distance weapon on Wraith per se. Not saying it's impossible, like of course you can do it, but it's just running in with a Volt or a De Devo or a Havoc is going to be more beneficial because if you're the first one in, then you're not going to be sniping at point blank range with let's say a 6x. You can definitely do it, it's not impossible, like from this range just start taking shots and maybe try to no scope or something, but you have to be mindful that it's not necessarily ideal 
compared to utilizing a close range weapon like let's say a even a hemlock even though it can be more for long range you can definitely burst really quickly even though they nerfed it really great weapon you can kind of switch it in if you want some of that range which is why you see so many wraiths utilize a wingman to get some damage in at a distance and of course very popular using the r9 mastiff wingman r99 you can definitely you know throw in an r301 with a 3x in there but just be sure you kind of you know very high level very high level what we're talking about right now and just making sure that when you go get into these gunfights that you're utilizing something a bit more close range and just don't catch yourself out by using a long range distance weapon when your wraith is going to be the first one into the gunfight if your wraith is the last one to a gunfight it kind of means that something's going wrong because she should be your entry fragger all right so let's segue real quick i'm going to highlight these two distances i want to show her key from a distance um all right go for it uh just hide behind yep all right so what you see here she queued obviously you want to be queued 100 percent behind but then she makes it over i didn't even see her i had a one second literally one second to shoot her as she went across now what we're going to showcase next is what happens when she queues on a grenade from an outside perspective i showed you right before we crashed out of the server so now we're going to throw a grenade i'm going to show you what that looks like from a third person perspective when she uses her queue you've probably seen it many times before but I want you to just to see the potential behind it from a third person perspective. So let's say I throw an Arxar. I'm gonna uh, just switch between characters real quick, Mari, uh, to get your queue up. And then I'm gonna turn on top friendly fire and then I'm gonna throw it at your feet. Throwing Arkstar. Avoided all damage. Definitely do this against like a Gibraltar ult, many different things. Big way to avoid massive damage there. So now you kind of saw it from a third party perspective, what it looks like from going from point A to point B, knowing that you can't get hit. I know that's kind of basic, but it's just good to see the distance, knowing how far obviously she can go. And that's literally like a perfect distance from point A to that's point B way. from where it started and where it ended. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to segue here as Mari dies. All right, guys. So for this portion of the video, what we're going to be discussing is breaking down again, all of the synergy between the various characters, more advanced techniques and what you can or cannot do. So the first one we're going to start off with, we're going to go through Watts and Gibraltar. Then we're going to go left to right, left to right, left to right, and talk about the benefits in it of everything. There's a lot to cover here, so I apologize if we miss anything, but I want this to be an all-inclusive guide. So let's talk about Watson and Wraith, the old classic between the two. So obviously you get Race Portal, you put it out. I'll make it an even short one. And then I'm going to go back. So this is a great way to really bait. But also what can happen and whenever somebody comes through, obviously, as you can tell, is you can fence up and put fences on her port. You can either do a little triangle. You can put the fence directly down the middle. There's different ways you can do this, especially whenever you're conducting, let's say, a kidnap. So actually, let's talk about that real quick. Um, the kidnap, even though I know we should have covered it more in the basics and we can talk about kidnapping. Uh, an enemy player and we'll use Watson because unfortunately Watson's always a victim of this because she's always kind of held up in a building wouldn't you say Mari yeah this makes for very sad Watsons exactly so when we're talking about techniques and talking and uh, keep in mind like I, I played a with a lot of wraiths especially in a competitive setting I'm not necessarily a wraith main myself but I definitely know all the ins and outs when it comes to a wraith because I've seen everything and anything that she can do because what do you face in a competitive setting wraith Okay, so let's talk about the kidnap. So essentially what happens whenever you want to push a building or you want to make a play is the Wraith is going to port. Placing a portal. And then she's going to use her Q to get right up on her. Drop that portal. The portal. And then hopefully if she times it right, boom, the Watson gets pushed right through. You kind of want to time it a bit better. I timed it a bit poorly there. Obviously, I could have dropped it like a second before. Usually if the person is kind of strafe spamming, you kind of read what they're doing. I'll kind of show you again just one more time just for example's sake is obviously she's behind cover. Uh, I'm gonna switch between the two characters here. So, so I have my Q Maybe. and I gotta get my ult. Give me one second, Mari. All right, kidnap number two. So obviously if she's you know crouching back and forth between a building, usually you put your port down so you don't get shot. You wanna Q right on top and then drop it and then she should go right through. But of course you have to gauge, at least the plus side now is that you can see what the Watson is doing 
in there within her queue, you can kind of see the figure of her just as an example. So you make that in terms of like a port, like a push when you're pushing a building, that's what you want to do. You can also use the port obviously as a get out mechanism. So I apologize we're kind of using the time of the Watson to kind of explain this, but also realize as a Watson, you have to be very, very careful about being kidnapped. I, I just I just noticed it always happens with Watson's team. So actually it's a nice, uh, nice little comparison there. And the ding there is because ding, we figured out how to, how to do it properly. No, that's Mari's phone. Anyways, I'll need that. Uh, it's all good. Don't worry. Obviously, just fencing up, building a little wall before you go in, is always going to be the best bet. What do you think? Anything yeah. else to add? I think too. We really highlighted fencing off the end of the portal down there um, when you go through one, which is very, very valuable. But it's worth pointing out that Watson can keep a wraith safe while she's getting ready to make a portal too. You know, if you're holed up in a building and that's about to get pushed, you can have your gen down, have some fences up, and the Wraith can start to make a portal while the Watson's holding. Yep, exactly. And this is the same concept for Caustic that we're going to talk about a little later as well. So all good stuff. Again, the reason why I have Mari, Mari here is that I really want this to be a comprehensive guide talking about all ins and outs and anything I may or may not miss. All right, so let's switch over to the next character, which is Gibraltar. All right, I'll have you be Gibraltar, and I am going to be Wraith. Now for the right Okay, it's same concept as before, but the synergy that comes with a Wraith and a Gibraltar. Again, let's say you're making a push and you want to push behind this thing over here. The Gibraltar will either, one, put the bubble on the port that's here, or two, wait to put the bubble once the port is actually set. In this circumstance, I'm not going to queue since all I'm doing is repositioning. So you notice how I'm looking back and you put the bubble there. And he's just buying time because obviously if we're in the open area and people are shooting, well, that's bad, right? I'm going to put Friendly Fire on so you're on my team. And so that can be bad, and obviously it just buys time for the Watson, Gibraltar, Bloodhound, whoever it is, to buy time to rotate to another spot. That's really what you're doing. And it could be vice versa. Uh, switch Legends back and forth and go through the port. Yep. Uh, so obviously here on the opposite spectrum, keep in mind, this is mindful that if you're on a hill... But let's say the port is there and they went from point A to point B and this happens to be more in the open. Well, the plus side is that, well, now you have cover for an extended period of time, which is a huge massive benefit and synergy between Gibraltar and Wraith. Another thing that can happen uh, that is really, really important to be mindful of. Let's uh, let's showcase this real quick, Mari. What I'm going to do, let's say you're getting third party and getting pushed and you're, you just want to fight. Let's say we want to fight right here, right out in the open. And one person's down. What normally will happen is that the Gibraltar will immediately res and you'll see the, the Wraith make an immediate port out and just like dip. So the Gibby will drop the bubble down, probably get the res and we'll put the port out in a better spot. So he's protected from a distance, comes through and now we have the ideal space for us to, to fight. At least a different pr angle, a different perspective to buy us time. Because that, that team who's pushing maybe from the hill has to make a push into the bubble. And of course, if there's a port here, and let's say we had a Watson, that's when you would fence it up. If you had a Caustic, that's when you would throw the barrels, and we're going to showcase that here in a moment. Um, anything that you think I miss in terms of Gibraltar and Wraith um, synergy? No, I think it's really important to point out that Gibraltar with Wraith is a really good all-around combination. Um, you know, you can use it to make aggressive plays, like we talked about with making the portal out and doming at the end of it you can use it to push a team for example especially if your back is to a wall or if you've got the zone coming in behind you but it's also defensive like we suggested here where you can use it to recover from uh, a fight where there's a third party coming you know it's a good all-around synergy between the two awesome all right next character let's go we're gonna work left to right now let's talk about bloodhound and wraith together so this one's a bit more straightforward. Obviously, you know, Wraith is going to be very aggro. As the biggest thing, obviously, I probably didn't mention the other part is that Wraith is your doula. She is your entry fragger. She is the person that is always going to go first in a gunfight. And the reason for that is because she has her cue to go immediately back. So that's really important to notate. I don't know if I'll put this early in the video. If not, I'll leave it where it is. But that's really important. And why she has good synergy with Bloodhound is that it puts her in an ideal spot. So just pop your cue over there, even though there's nobody there. 
So let's say he has this Q, uh, and she needs to port, uh, you know, Q to a different spot to not get shot from another team. But at least she knows where they're at to get optimal positioning to outplay them. So that's where the Bloodhound and the Wraith really have really good synergy. It's not necessarily any massive abilities, but if the Wraith is making a play, making a port, sometimes you'll see the Bloodhound just ult and then barrel on in to whatever location they need to go to. So it's just important to notate. Bloodhound and Wraith is just... A good solid combination they're going to be able to open frag a building they're going to be able to see who's inside it also helps the wraith also kidnap so if she needs to know exactly where the enemy is and we're within distance and she can scan well bloodhound will scan highlight where they're at and at least give an idea so then she can come in port snatch them up and steal them it's why we have this combination constantly seen the most popular, which is Bloodhound, Wraith, and Gibraltar currently, which could, the meta can definitely change as players get nerfed and get buffed, but it's because Gibraltar provides the ability to get in and out, Bloodhound provides the intel and also a scanning, and then Wraith provides the entry frag and damage initially. But that pretty much covers uh, Bloodhound and Wraith. So let's talk about Lifeline and, uh, Lifeline and Wraith. There's less synergy between Lifeline and Wraith. The plus side is that because she's an entry fragger, let's say if you messed up your Q and you were just in a gunfight, you know, guns blazing, just trying to hit a target over and over and over again, right? Is that Lifeline is there to just keep spam picking you up. And even after she were to pick you up, um, go ahead and just down me real quick, Mari, with something and then just pick me up right after. Oh, I just died. I didn't get a res shield. All right, take two. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> 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 just got gunned down. <laughs> when stuff goes wrong. Hang on, if we're gonna do this, I'm gonna be the the uh, typical pub pub lifeline. There you go. Right. Oh wow, that's toxic. Okay, so obviously switch. Let's get the res off. There's really no time, just as an FYI, guys. She can drop her drone immediately, but if you're out in the open, bye, just leave. Which can be a massive pain. Like, a Gibraltar would throw their bubble, but a Wraith could at least run. This is really the biggest synergy when it comes, because Wraith is going to go in and die most of the time. That's only natural. You, it's, you, it's The Wraith should die first. If the Wraith doesn't die first, you need to ask the question, did the Wraith abandon their team, or what's going on there? But that's really the most of the synergy that comes between the two. Uh, plus, I uh, with care packages to get her more armor. And you really should put the armor on the Wraith because she's going to be the one going in first. And most likely, mm, that's just really going to be kind of the, the reality of it. Okay. We got Pathfinder. Uh, go to switch to Pathfinder for me if you don't mind. So the synergy between Pathfinder and Wraith, obviously, here that we're going to see is that Pathfinder has a ton, a ton of mobility. And Wraith is obviously the entry fragger. So Pathfinder is going to be able to take a different angle and height. So maybe you take the low ground and Pathfinder way. takes height. Also, whenever you're utilizing your port, you can use it to extend your distance of where you're trying to go. So I'm going to give it an example. So let's say we call out. I'm going to put a port here. And then Mari, go ahead and get your ult. And you're going to utilize the zip to get as far up wherever Let's we need to go as possible. Um, so I'm going to go to port real quick. I'm going to try to get as far as humanly possible. Let's say this is either to push or to get away. Okay, and then obviously I'll drop it. He comes through. The Gibraltar could throw a bubble down, and then he's going to put a zip to get us out. This is a lot of mobility getting us from point A to point B. Realize the distance that we covered without getting shot. Obviously from here, going all the way here, and now we have a harder time getting shot as we go from up here all the way to up here. So there's a synergy there with her. Obviously, if there's a port and Pathfinders at a different location, he can queue in, go in somewhere, or utilize his uh, ulti to kind of get us where we need to go. That's most of the synergy that you're going to find. Pathfinder is great at finding different angles for Wraith. While she can't get up on height, Pathfinder can to help way. engage in the encounter. So that's what you saw a lot early on. Pathfinder, Watson, and Wraith kind of give that entry frag and entry push that Rafe needs. So she's down here fighting somebody and Pathfinder is up at a different angle to help shoot. Yeah, I think it's important too to note that a Pathfinder can kind of cover for Wraith too. You know, if you have a portal that goes wrong, for example, um, Pathfinder can walk up halfway and still be able to grapple either in or out as needed without having to necessarily take a risky portal um, because of that extra mobility. Exactly. So if there was a portal here and it was a bad one, you know, I could have grappled back to our zipline. 
yeah, or, away. or even just have options, really. So if you don't want everybody sometimes barreling in through the same spot. Anyone. Sometimes it may be the only the Wraith or Watson, or maybe the Wraith and the Bloodhound, or the Wraith and the Gibraltar. But the Pathfinder could say, you know what? To So I can take a different angle to defend you. I'll fly up and cover you guys. Definitely a massive benefit there. All right, let's talk about Bangalore and Wraith. So the biggest thing here is just providing cover. The biggest thing that she can, she can lane, she can zone. She can also kind of counter a, a Wraith portal. So we're going to showcase that here in just a second. Let's say, obviously I have to make a port. Her way of buying time is to smoke up where she's at or smoke up where I'm going. She can either do one of the two. So if I drop it here, there's cover where we're going and she can put a little smoke. A little, a little d debris, a little cover. That's really where she's going to find the synergy between Wraith. Or let's say my Q is down. She can provide smokes to provide cover where I need to go. Or if I'm in a gunfight and maybe have Digi threat, then Bloodhound, or sorry. Then, uh, what is her name? Bangalore, my gosh. This is why she needs, needs, needs love and needs a buff. This is why Bangalore needs... <laughs> This is why the, the versatility and everything that she can provide needs to get a little bit of buff. But she provides smoke. Now let's throw her ult. Let's say you see a wraith port right in the middle. I'm going to throw your ult. She can use it to zone a wraith. And if you time it right, once they come through, it can provide a little bit of an opening. Or even if she's being chased, if we're being chased by somebody, throw it behind you. She really just provides zoning and to stop a push. So let's say somebody got knocked. Bangalore essentially threw her ult that way. And then the wraith is like, we're out. Let's get, let's get out of here. Take the port. Let's, let's get out of Dodge, and if the port's gone, then we're screwed. <laughs> then we have to make another way to get out. But that's essentially how you're going to maximize the synergy between Bangalore and Wraith. There's quite a bit of synergy, but because of all the others, obviously there's a bit more that's definitely more beneficial than the than the Bangalore. Because obviously they can still shoot through smoke and still get, get hits and throw nades and such. All right. Yeah, I think I want to add, too, that uh, you can also use the Bangalore's alt to clear a path for the Wraith. So if you need to port into a specific location that's being held in the kind of like in the open, like say the open fields north of uh, the train in World's Edge, um, and there's a rock that you want to get behind, but there's people, you can zone people out with the Bangalore alt to clear space for the Wraith portal to go through. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the next legends, Caustic and Wraith. Me. This works very much. In fact, we don't even have to do very much. The port's still there. Essentially, it's like a Watson. We talked about this a moment ago, so we'll spend potentially a little less time. But it will buy you that that, that space and that time. I, can you, do you have a gun? Can you shoot it? Boom, there we go. We're free. We're free. <laughs> Just like barrel right through. And anybody, if they come through and they see a barrel, they're not going to engage it. Or if he's got his ult. Do you have your ult? No, we we're gonna get, we're gonna get our ult here. We're gonna get that. Yeah, we're gonna get the ult. So I'm gonna barrel on through, and this is probably the most toxic relationship that you'll ever see in Apex Legends. That anybody is fearful to take the port. Trust me, any pro is not gonna take the port if they got a caustic on their team to push through. So let's say I put it over here, and you got your ult. You come through, and we got our armors and everything, and just throw throw that sucker down. Free, it's free. If anybody came through, they're gonna be the most upset people in the world. And that's free damage and yeah ggs at that point pretty much they're not winning that fight even if they ha almost had you at one unfortunately because they were just in a cloud of smoke but caustic is there to kind of provide protection much like watson it's why whenever the caustic buff was mentioned why everyone was so fearful of it because he can just hold out areas for an extended period of time and that's definitely just scary to run into knowing that there's this is supposed to be a safe space now a dangerous one I think that pretty much wraps up Caustic and Wraith, right? Yeah, I can't think of much else. It's pretty straightforward. Um, Mirage and Wraith. Let's talk about that next. This time will be different. So Mirage and Wraith have unfortunately less synergy compared to like a Caustic, a Watson, or anything like that. I guess you could say their synergy is just going into a fight. I mean, it could be probably the most overwhelming thing in the world to see a Mirage push in with the Wraith and then see him ult and see multiple targets and see Qs everywhere being pushed. So let's say I were to push in and you have your ult. And for some reason I didn't use my Q in the circumstance, but you come through and then we're fighting. Let's say I take a lot of damage and then I Q and then you were to pop your ult. The both synergy here is just having, they, they no longer can shoot the Wraith, but now they're trying to shoot the Mirage, which they don't know which one it is quite yet. 
but of course they can nade and throw things out and that really is most of the extent of the synergy that wraith have is mostly from entry fragging it's mostly to get out having a wraith Q and then having a, a mirage just put everything out can be pretty overwhelming for an enemy target to see especially at low elos when you think about it, let's say like we're facing bronze silvers even golds having a mirage or wraith i can just imagine for a new player it can be pretty frustrating but that's really the extent of their synergy is mostly making for pushes uh but you kind of make an informed decision how you want to make make that play Let's yeah, he kind of fills the role of a flanker um, in a sense in that he's going to be the second entry to kind of get taken off angle. And I think comparatively, Pathfinder just does it better with a Wraith. Exactly. But it's not a bad alternative. You see people do it well, like Matt Pickett, right? That's true. All right. The Auk Train and Wraith. This time. So same thing here. You're going to use it to either get further away or you're going to troll people by putting it on that Wraith portal. <laughs> you can use it to obviously block areas things of that nature but if you're using the, the wraith port and then queuing and then we drop it here Portal boom placed. you can either put put it on there as like a troll you can do that i mean at that point they're just going to kind of bounce away or you can use it to get a little more distance of where you want to go once you come through and then push and try to get further away that's really most of the extent of it He's a little bit worse. I, mean, I would say Mirage and Pathfinder are more of a benefit, right, Mari, compared to Octrain in terms of synergy? Yeah. Unfortunately, Octane's a character that really kind of plays for himself. Um, you know, there, the jump pad does exist for your team, but when it comes to synergizing with any one specific character, he doesn't really complement anyone directly. Yeah. Um, we'll put together a guide later on, on the Octrain and see how he does with everyone else. But essentially, this is kind of the extent of it, which is why you don't really see him utilized too much. But yeah, he plays for himself. He he's looks... a good pub character. Yeah. You know, with Wraith, I would say he's a good pub character because he's fast. And that's one place that they could synergize well is if you're trying to do like a high paced game, going for a lot of kills, having characters with high mobility like Octane can help you run around and just get to the next fight quicker. Yes, sir. All right, let's talk about Crypto. And Wraith. This is actually a really interesting combo. Honestly, this is actually a good one. Especially after the changes, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So essentially, this is why you saw Revenant, Crypto, and Wraith ran together. It's just imagine seeing a Revenant ult here and then saying, we're going to go push a building. Are you ready, Crypto? And then all of a sudden, I push in, put my Q. I, I have to wait a little bit more for him to push in. He timed it well, actually. Let's go. And we're here. They're now 50% damage. I put the port... He was at a distance, or he can run up, one of the two. He is, now the, the Crypto has a way in and out, especially whenever he's scanning. The Wraith pretty much gives the Crypto all the mobility in the world to get in and to get out, and so he can play Game Boy and utilize this ult. So obviously you saw there, once it came through and dropped the port, it could definitely be done with a lot more finesse. Uh, but we're just doing this today, obviously, for demonstration purposes. But obviously, it came through. That guy is now low. He, the guy's at a massive disadvantage. And then he could come through and do cleanup, whatever I don't get. And let's say if I didn't use my Q to 100% get in, then I can use a Q to go Face back a little bit of ways to reposition. The Crypto's got my back. And then boom. Exactly. So there's a lot of great synergy between Crypto and Wraith overall that's monumentally beneficial especially because the uh the changes to crypto yeah i think crypto really fills uh a similar role to bloodhound in that there's a lot of information provided um you can use the drone to really scan and find targets for wraith but also it comes with the added benefit of the uh, utility from the emp clearing out defenses and uh just creating openings really yeah. for a wraith to get in and out and likewise the wraith complements that by giving crypto a way to catch up since crypto is often sitting in the back with the drone as we suggested yeah and usually what you'll see is the watson next to him so if the crypto's right here i you know i could literally pop a port for him and say hey bro i'm gonna go in and help you out no biggie get him a different off angle or he can sit there whichever one he wants to do but Wraith benefits massively from information. She needs info to make a dis informed decision of where to put her port. So let's say the enemy was over here, but then I put my port out in the open on the left side thinking I was safe. When in reality, if I had that information, I probably would have put the port over here to be a lot safer. So, Tujme, information is key. All right, moving on. Revenant, uh, same thing as before, honestly. This, this creates a little bit of back and forth between uh, 
between Wraith and Revenant. I mean, is he utilizing comp? Kind of, I guess. It depends. Was for a little while. I think that kind of fell out of popularity, especially because of the rise of Caustic. Yeah. Um, but still, uh, in a lot of situations, very valuable synergy. So drop your ult for me, if you don't mind. So say I pop the ult, and I go in. Boom. All right, it's time to go push. Free damage. And I may not even need to use my Q unless I want to get sent back. You kind of gauge that. You drop it. You're instantly in a fight. And the crypt, the Revenant no longer has to waste any time running in. We can instantly fight. Now, once we're sent back, obviously you have to take damage to get sent back. But if we happen to get sent back, let's pretend just for this moment that we did. We're here and we can heal up and then we can instantly go right back in. Hi, we're back. And this is actually where the synergy can help with Revenant, Wraith, and Lifeline is that if Lifeline has her bot back here, there. but this is more for the Revenant guide specifically. It only benefits uh, like Lifeline and Revenant is that if she, if they both get sent back and she drops her healing drone down, uh, well, that's something less I have to worry about. But that's again Revenant and Lifeline rather than Wraith. But just understand like when you go back, you know, having that benefit can definitely help. Yeah, it's uh, obviously it's a very aggressive uh, combination and it was widely used with crypto like we just used in that last example there for crypto to create an opening and then revenant to come in with the whole team having the protection of his alt yeah and the mobility of the wraith it was a really widely used composition for that it, it's used a lot in apex south and north specifically revenant used to have a massive high high pick rate there um way back when but obviously not anymore but things changed and metas adjust yeah, and the other thing Revenant can do too is if you're being chased and you're using a portal to escape, uh, I can drop his uh, regular ability right on top of the portal. And as they come through, they'll first and foremost, that's a little jarring if you've ever been hit with the other end of that uh, ability there. It's Here, you can throw it on me real quick, just so they can see it. There. Yeah. My abilities are yeah, it just looks a little very disruptive. And, uh, but also it prevents ability. So if you're being chased and someone's coming through, all of a sudden, now they're locked out of their abilities. And I can't even queue or port out. Um, this doesn't stop a queue midway through, if I'm not mistaken, right? Do I remember it that right? It won't stop a queue, but it will stop a portal if you're not in your queue. Gotcha. Let's, let's, let's just showcase that as an example. So let's say I pop my ult. Placing a portal. And it stops it. GG's. That sucks. And the port's it gone. Sure and once this is gone, this lasts for quite a bit of time. Obviously, um, it should reset the ult. So we're going to find out the information in just five seconds. Yep, it's still here. It's because I didn't finish it. Punching. But if you happen to throw it on me again, obviously, it would uh, it would stop me from moving. Or stop my little ult. I'd be Only like, if I hit it. Yeah, or if I, you know, massively ran into it. So for Revenants, if you want to stop the, a Wraith port, maybe from kidnapping your Watson or something, that's a great way to stop her. It's very good in choke points. Um, she's in a really rough spot if Revenant actually does that, especially when she's pushing through a building. She can't do anything. Let's say she was about to make the entrance of a door, and that was there. I mean, she's dead. She can't queue back. She's just like, well, I guess I'm fighting here now. Yeah, it's interesting then that Revenant has really good synergy with her, but also can counter her effectively. Yeah. So I'm curious if, if he gets a little bit more of a buff, if we'll see him utilized even more. I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of Revenant pushes, uh, just because the back and... F I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, there's a lot of variables to it, for sure. And I think it's a it's a tough thing to balance for the dev team. You know, balance yeah. is a topic that gets talked about widely. And when you have a character that's meant to be hyper-aggressive, like Revenant, um, that can be very tricky to balance because... They're either going to be overpowered or useless. And it's very, very hard to find the sweet spot in between that. Definitely. All right, let's go over to Loba because there's less synergy, unfortunately, with Loba and Wraith. Now for the, right choice. The, the only benefit here is that, I mean, I guess you have your ult and she can help you loot up, which is a plus. But I mean, you are the ability to get Loba in and out of fights as well. She has her Q, Enemy but I kind of call it the budget Wraith. She actually has the opposite problem of uh, Wraith, but obviously, like, l l let's show the example. Here, come over here. While Wraith, when she queues, she starts up slow, and she can go across for free. 
Now the difference between Wraith and Loba is that you throw your Q, which takes a second, but then she can't do anything afterwards. The Wraith can. The Wraith can start shooting once she gets her weapon out, but it takes a little second for Loba to do it. So she's like the opposite of Wraith. It's like having two Wraiths on the team, but one of them gets loot instead of positioning, and it has a budget version of going into phase. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah, I think Loba, like Pathfinder, can help with some off angles by getting height. That's one place her Q does uh, have a bit of an advantage comparatively to uh, a Wraith. Yeah. Is you can take that uh, height a little bit more effectively. Um, you know, so now all of a sudden I'm up on this rock. But ultimately speaking, again, Loba's kind of more of a selfish type of character. You know, the positioning is only for herself. And while the loot is there for everybody, at a certain point, that's less impactful. It might be useful at the beginning of a game if you're trying to go for a high kill game, like we talked about before. Yeah. Um, she's mobile and can keep up with a wraith as a result of that or take off angles. And getting that early loot uh, can be a big advantage in winning some early fights. And you can kind of snowball from there and have a good game because of that. She's but good at early game, say, but bad late game, essentially. Yeah, it's not good for any sort of real competitive play, unfortunately. Yeah, if they buffer her Q, her tactical ability, on par with Wraith, then it's like you're dealing with two Wraiths. But right now, unfortunately, just just isn't the case. Rampart hey, is next. <laughs> This, time we'll this is an different. interesting one for sure. Yeah, I don't. The issue that with synergy is that it's like having a budget version of Watson. Like it's good for for Wraith maybe after the Q that she sets up, but she, I mean, they did buff it just this patch, quite literally, that she sets up a little faster. But that ramp up time does kind of kind of suck, a little bit. Yeah, there's very very little. Um, as you said, budget Watson's a good example. If we're holding here, this can provide cover for a Wraith to create a portal. On the other end, I mean, I guess now with the faster setup, you could, in theory, use it to set up in the open, team, bait a team into chasing you through the portal, even too. Yeah, let's see how you long know? that takes with the with the new patch, so people yeah, can just see it. Curious. And then even how, like, the weapon is mostly just for her as well. So let's say I know I'm safe over here, and I put it over here, and we're, we got four walls. She comes through, and I'm covering, and essentially just like a Watson, which you need to put cover immediately for us to shoot or fight they would have come through unfortunately by now yeah, but i mean how close they were yeah but like if, yeah. They, if you had a little time you can set up and that's where the synergy is built maybe we buy ourselves a little time by moving a little further you know mm -hmm. but nonetheless i mean that's yeah that's kind of rough unfortunately it's ramparts in a spot where i think unfortunately in in pubs she feels okay because the thing for people to keep in mind when talking about synergy is your casual matches are usually less organized, right? I mean, it's unless you're three stacking pubs, which a lot of people do not do, um, you know, your communication and your synergy with each other aren't exactly uh, going to be as you might expect in, say, a ranked or competitive setting. And a character like Rampart is okay in pubs because you know, there's less organization to make an effective push against her. But in ranked and competitive settings, people are more likely to coordinate. And unfortunately, um, you know, Rampart just kind of falls short in that department. Yeah, we'll see if she gets buffed and maybe for weapon can make a full 360, that'll definitely help as well. Mm -hmm. That's very true. All right, last one we got is Horizon and Wraith. Now for the right choice. Yeah, this is, for me, in a very exciting combination. I've been uh, playing a lot of Horizon since she came out, and uh, there's just so much power between the two of these together. Yeah, it's it's like it's like having a constant Pathfinder. Granted, they just nerfed her Q, but essentially, even she can stop Wraith portals, because let's say a Wraith portal is right on top of her, she can literally drop her ult, or she can use it to push out a team that the Wraith is kind of making a push towards and then nading them, you know? to the netherworld essentially she can also throw her tactical ability on the port to you know kind of stop people from getting towards it she can obviously put it at doorways but again if she threw her ult right on the port right after we took it then we can just start nading that you know as they came through and they're pretty much stuck yeah with wraith being such an aggressive character horizon's alt provides just such a good utility for a wraith you know you're 
almost guaranteed if you throw it on a team to at least catch one player, if not all of them, yeah. on an enemy team. Especially if they're holed up in a tight spot or hiding behind a rock where there's no cover uh, elsewhere. Um, it's such a powerful utility. The vertical movement is something that Wraith is lacking. So the vertical movement of Horizon complements Wraith very well. That can allow Wraith to get to places she wouldn't normally be able to get to. Yeah, she's uh, great for early, mid-game, and if we're playing competitive, that's where she falls short. Where, like, a Caustic, a Watson, a Crypto for information, a Bloodhound. She can get information on verticality, like, very easy, but she's good for ranks, she's good for pubs. I did see her in APAC North a little bit, but she still kind of struggled. You have to yeah. be very confident in your plays with Horizon and Wraith to really work, to be honest. Yeah, it is definitely an aggressive combo. Um, her defensive utility is somewhat there, but it definitely has more offensive potential when they're putting the two of them together. Yeah. Um, and, and it's interesting that we bring up competitive play too, because it's worth pointing out that, generally speaking, especially if you're newer to Apex, you'll find that people play competitively at a much slower pace. And so characters that have a lot of aggression aren't necessarily in use as much as you might expect because you see those aggressive characters in your casual matches more. Yeah. Um, so characters like Horizon that have a lot of uh, aggression, Bloodhound that has a lot of aggression, um, you know, you're going to find that you're going to see more defensive characters instead, like a Watson, like a Caustic, like a Gibraltar, when you get to a competitive setting. Yeah. I mean, I think at this that point, that covers everything. I mean, I think Horizon will definitely change when the Wraith... Like, as players get better, and they manage to make more plays, depending on where comp goes, because the comp, like you said, is always definitely slow, but we'll see where kind of builds from there. But again, I don't think there's really much that we left out. I mean, this cover is literally Wraith from noob all the way to pro, to advanced techniques, to thought process. We talked about her Q, what she can do when she's in her Q, her port, how to utilize it, where she's strong, where she's weak. I feel like this is a pretty uh, comprehensive master guide overall to Wraith. Yeah, I, uh, I think there's a lot to talk about and we got through just about everything you know there's um obviously advanced individual things but when we're talking about synergy between other characters you know i do feel like that was very comprehensive yeah i may uh probably add it earlier what guns to run with wraith i'll probably record that separately all right yeah i mean really that could be its own thing what guns to run with each character even yeah all right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video. Again, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, everybody. Hopefully you found this video, this master guide, very helpful. Um, definitely enjoy putting it together, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Also, don't forget to follow Marianas on Twitter. Bye, everybody.